struggling to lose belly fat, you are likely making one of these eight mistakes that I see all the time as an online fitness coach. Number one, you are eating the wrong types of carbs and too much of them. Certain carbohydrates will spike your storage hormone insulin a lot more than others. Having higher insulin levels circulating around your blood is directly tied to storing more belly fat. And these higher insulin spiking foods are actually called higher glycemic load foods. They include like white rice, they include pastas, they include like rice cakes, any sugar, candy in general. They all have a very refined profile that doesn't have really any fiber within them. So if you're concerned with storing belly fat, I would really suggest you actually cut down or cut out some really high glycemic load foods. Instead, switch to lower glycemic load foods, such as whole wheat pastas if you want to, you know, switch it up a bit, like chickpea pasta is really good, brown rice, a lot of oats as well, and making sure you are prioritizing your fruits and vegetables. Second thing that is causing your belly fat gain is inadequate or not enough sleep. A lot of people completely neglect this, but it has been shown time and time again that the less sleep you get, the less quality sleep you get, the more belly fat you will store. And this is because it increases the amount of cortisol that is in your blood. Cortisol is our stress hormone. And if there is too much cortisol in the areas of the day when you're not really supposed to be having too much cortisol circulating in your blood, this will cause ghrelin to spread spike up. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone. It makes you increase your appetite. It makes you hungrier. And as a result, you are more likely to snack or overeat during meals because of these hormone imbalances. For three, you are not walking enough. You're not taking enough steps. And this is so important because it's low intensity exercise that is virtually effortless. And unless you have some sort of knee issues or you're significantly obese or overweight, this should not be an issue for you to increase your steps. So low intensity exercise also burns fat as fuel the most efficiently because you're using anaerobic glycolysis, but make sure that if you have a step tracker, you're hitting at least eight to 10,000 steps per day. Or if you don't have a tracker like that, at least go outside for about like 20 minutes, get some sunshine in. Number four, you were probably too stressed. So going back to cortisol, if you have a lot of cortisol floating around during the day when it's not even supposed to be elevated, that can be contributing to your belly fat gain. Now, stress doesn't have to come from work or family stress. Stress can also be from working out, physical activity. It can be emotional stress. The body doesn't know the difference. It just knows it is stress. So some things that you can do to help with this is definitely go out for a walk, just like in my third point, just to decrease that cortisol level. You can also journal your thought, brain dump everything that is frustrating you, that is stressing you out, Focus on what you can control in that situation to make the most out of your mental energy, right? Because we have like kind of, I like to think of it as a battery. Like we have a certain amount of battery life throughout the day. And if, you know, things piss you off day to day, that energy drains you throughout the day. So you focusing on what you can control will save that mental energy for tasks that actually need your full attention. Number five, snacking. I know, I know, we all love a good snack, but there's something called smart snacking and there's something called not smart snacking. When people reach for snack foods like pretzels, M&Ms, la la la, those are usually very high glycemic load foods that by themselves are really going to spike that insulin level. So if you are wanting to have a snack, you know, make sure that it has an adequate amount of protein and fat with it, or better yet, just make your meals a lot bigger. The sixth point is that you're not eating enough protein, especially if your goal is to lose belly fat and potentially gain and maintain your muscle, you need enough protein in order to do that. The amount of protein that you need per day definitely varies from person to person, depending on your activity, your height, your weight, your sex. And I would say start with 30 grams of protein 
per meal. Start tracking and start weighing how much protein you are eating because trust me, we'll see your belly fat slowly shrink once you implement a higher protein diet. For eight, you probably don't have enough muscle and you're probably not doing exercise that is promoting increasing or maintaining your muscle mass. And why this is very important is because muscle absorbs excess glucose that is circulating around in your blood as glycogen. The less muscle you have, the greater the chance of you becoming insulin resistant. So if you prioritize increasing your muscle mass, the more blood glucose your body can store in your muscles rather than on your belly. Make sure you're prioritizing some sort of strength training, resistance training, and make sure you are eating enough protein. Those two will definitely kickstart your fat loss. That's it for me, guys. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye.